Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque. Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod. Pray for us. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we have begun the 40 days of the Lenten season. We accompany our Lord Jesus Christ in fighting the devil, in fighting temptation, fighting evil in our life so that we might share in the goodness in the kindness and compassion of the life of God. And so in this Mass, let us once again renew our promise to renounce Satan, to renounce evil in our life, and once again renew our commitment to live a life according to the promise of our baptism. And so to prepare us for this celebration, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against, against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, 
through the yearly observances of Holy Lent that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you. All the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, This is the sign that I am giving for all ages to come of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant I have made between me and you and all living beings so that the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all mortal beings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. In your kindness, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Good and upright is the Lord, thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice, and he teaches the humble his way. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. In it, he also went to preach to the spirits in prison who had once been disobedient while God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark in which a few persons, eight in all, were saved through water. This prefigured baptism, which saves you now, it is not a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts. And the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. We are entering the Lenten season. Today is the first Sunday of, Ad of Lent. And uh, this is the five Sundays, 40 days, of preparing ourselves, of renewing ourselves so that we could celebrate Holy Week very well. We could remember the Paschal mystery of Jesus very well with our hearts and with our lives. And this year, my dear brothers and sisters, it is also very significant that we are celebrating this Lenten season in 2021, 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines. Siguro po kapag nasa labas kayo ng Manila Cathedral, nakikita niyo po yung ating mga banners doon, no? sa palibot ng Manila Cathedral at Plaza Roma, the number 500. We are commemorating this year 1521, the first arrival of Christianity in the country in Homonhon, no? in Samar. And then the first Easter Sunday Mass was celebrated in Limasawa, Leyte. And then the first baptism celebrated in Cebu. That same year, 1521. Kaya tuwang-tuwa ang ating mga kapatid from the Visayas area. No? Sigurado ako, marami sa inyo dito ay from the Visayas area. And those who are watching us online, no? actually po maraming nanonood sa atin online from Cebu. No? And even Mindanao also. No? So uh, I would like to greet them. Those who are watching us from the Visayas area. This year, 2021, is your year because the first Christians in the country came from the Visayas area. And this is a reason for us to celebrate. But I think, my dear brothers and sisters, this is also the time that we need to renew our baptism baptismal promises. Inaalala po natin na limang daang taon na na nabinyagan simula nung 1521 ang mga unang Pilipino na nabinyagan. Limang, daon, limang daang taon na tayo na nabibinyagan no? sa pagiging katoliko, sa pagiging kristyano. Ngayon siguro magandang pag-isipan natin tayo ba ay nagsasabuhay ng ating binyag bilang mga katoliko? Ibig sabihin, ang pagiging katoliko ba ay sa pangalan lamang o isinasabuhay natin? And so, my dear brothers and sisters, let us allow our readings today to deepen our understanding 
of what baptism is. Sana po ngayong araw na ito ay mapalalim po natin ano nga ba ang ibig sabihin ng binyag sa ating kanya-kanyang mga buhay, sa ating buhay bilang simbahan. Kung tatanungin ko po kayo ngayong umaga na ito, ano ang unang naiisip ninyo kapag sinabi ko ang salitang binyag? Siguro ang una ninyong naiisip ay ang tubig. No, kapag bininyagan, ibig sabihin bubuhusan ng tubig. Naku, meron ngang sumagot sa akin na isang bata. Ang una daw niyang naaalala sa binyag ay lumpia. Masay ko bakit lumpia, no? Kasi may handa, no? Kapag binyag, may handang lumpia, no? Kaya yan ang naaalala agad unahan sa lumpia, no? Pero sana mga kapatid, alam ko yan ang naaalala natin, no? Kapag uh, sinabi ang binyag, may handaan, may pagtitipon. Pero sana ay wag din nating kalimutan ano nga ba ang dala ng binyag sa atin. We do not only remember the food, the gathering, but we also must remember the true meaning of baptism. In our first reading from the book of Genesis, we read about the story of Noah, the ark, when God, through the waters of the flood, cleansed the world from evil. From the waters of the flood, God saved Noah, his family, from evil. Yung kwento po sa unang pagbasa natin ay tungkol sa kay Noah at kung paanong yung baha ay pinuksa ng Diyos ang kasamaan. Kung maaalala natin, ang kwento sa Genesis, nilikha si Adan at Eva, pero natukso at nagkasala, sumuway sa Diyos. Yung kanilang unang mga anak, si Cain at si Abel, nagpatayan, no? pinatay ni Cain ang kanyang kapatid. At nakita ng Diyos, ganito pala ang epekto ng kasamaan sa mga tao. Kaya sa pamamagitan ng tubig, nilinis ng Diyos ang sangkalupaan mula sa kasamaan. God saw the evil that is in the world and so through the waters of baptism, He cleansed the world from evil. And after cleansing the world from evil, God now enters into a covenant with the people. A covenant of goodness, a covenant of love, a covenant of faith. This is what we are also undergoing in baptism. God cleanses us from evil through the waters of baptism and then enters into a covenant with us. Kapag bininyagan po tayo, nililinis ng Diyos ang ating pagkatao sa kasamaan, sa epekto ng kasalanan. At nang sa gayon, tayo ay makakapasok sa isang kasunduan kasama ang Diyos na tayo ay magiging mabuti at ang Panginoon ay magiging tapat din sa atin. Yan po ang kasunduan ng binyag. That is why in our second reading today, from the first letter of St. Peter, we also see there that he said, Baptism saves you, cleanses you from the dirt of your body, but also it is an appeal to God for a clear conscience. Ang bigyag pala ay hindi lamang naglilinis sa atin 
kundi tayo ay nagkakaroon ng bagong pagkatao, bagong pag-iisip, bagong buhay. Kanina po sa entrance song, kinanta natin yung uh, sikat na sikat na kanta tuwing kwaresma. No? Buksan ang aming puso. Buksan ang aming isip. Buksan ang aming palad. Yan ang sinasabi natin sa binyag. Binabago ng Diyos ang ating puso, ang ating isip, binubuksan niya ang ating palad at ang ating buhay sa kabutihan at hindi sa kasamaan. In our gospel passage today, Jesus spent 40 days in the desert to battle Satan, the evil one. Si Jesus, sa pagsisimula ng kanyang paglilingkod sa mga tao, ay nilabanan si Satanas. He said no to Satan and he fulfilled his mission to God. After staying 40 days in the desert, Jesus went out to Galilee and proclaimed the good news of God. Mga minamahal na kapatid, ang biyaya po ng binyag ay paglilinis sa atin mula sa kasalanan, mula sa sumpa ng kasalanan. Nang sa gayon, tayo ay makapasok sa isang pakikipagkasunduan sa Diyos. Isang kasunduan na sinasabi ng Diyos, ako ay isang mabuti na Diyos at ang kasunduan natin sa aking pagmamahal, kayo naman ay tutugon din ng pagmamahal at kabutihan sa akin. One important ritual in baptism is the baptismal promises. Kung maaalala po ninyo, kapag binyag ay itinatakwil po natin ang kasalanan at pinapahayag natin ng ating pananampalataya sa Diyos. Siguro po naka-attend na kayo ng binyag o kaya nagninong o ninang na kayo sa binyag. Tatanungin ng pari, itinatakwil ba ninyo si Satanas? Ano ang sagot natin? Opo, itinatakwil namin. Kaya lang minsan kapag tinatanong ko yan, alam niyo po, minsan nagtatawanan pa yung mga ninong at ninang at yung mga magulang. No? Parang nakakatawa pa sa kanila. No? Parang, uh, kaya minsan tinatanong ko sila, seryoso ba kayo na tinatakwil ninyo si Satanas? No? Kasi minsan, parang nagiging katatawanan tuloy no yung ganyan na itinatakwil si Satanas no minsan nagtuturuan pa yan no kung sino daw si Satanas sa kanila no sa mga ninong at ninang pero sana ay seryosohin natin ito no yung binyag na ating tinanggap yung ating pagtugon sa mga tanong na ito itinatakwil ko si Satanas at ang lahat ng kanyang gawain lahat ng kanyang pang-aakit. When we respond to these baptismal promises of renouncing Satan, his evil works, this is our covenant with God. This is the covenant of baptism. And after renouncing Satan and evil, we will now turn to God and profess our belief and our faith in Him. Sa bawat binyag, doon tayo pumapasok sa covenant, isang kasunduan ng Diyos at ng tao, na ang ating buhay ay itinatakwil ang masama at tayo ay sumusunod sa kabutihan. Gusto niyo po ba ng buhay na puno ng kasamaan o isang buhay na puno ng kabutihan. 
ano kaya ang pipiliin natin? Ano kaya ang susundan natin? Will we follow a life filled with goodness? Or will we follow a life that is filled with evil? Nakikita niyo ko ba anong klaseng buhay ang meron kapag puno ng kasamaan? What can our life be if it is filled with evil? Siguro po nakikita po ninyo ngayon sa mga balita. Kapag ang buhay ay puno ng kasamaan, ano ang nangyayari sa tao? Kayang pumatay. Nakikita niyo siguro yung mga riding in tandem. Nakakita na ako, no? nakapanood ako ng video. Parang, parang wala lang ang pagpatay ng tao. Saglit lang na pagputok ng baril. Paano kaya nakakatulog ang mga taong ito? Akala nila, kikita sila ng pera. Pero, sigurado akong hindi payapa ang buhay ng mga ito. How many times did we hear in the news, people killing other people, people who corrupt money from the government, mga tao na imbis na ang pera ay gagamitin sa vaccine, sa mga ospital, sa pagpapagaling ng mga tao sa panahon ng pandemic, may iba na nakukuha pang mag-corrupt. Paano kaya sila nakakatulog sa gabi? A life of evil, a life filled with evil is a life with a covenant with Satan. Ang mga tao na pumapatay ng buhay, ang mga tao na sumisira ng buhay, ang mga tao na nagnanakaw sa kaban ng bayan, ang kanilang covenant at kasunduan hindi sa Diyos kay Satanas. But we are reminded today, my dear brothers and sisters, tayo po ay binyagan, tayo po ay katoliko, tayo po ay kristyano, and we need to say no to Satan. We will renounce Satan and his evil works, and we will only say yes to God. Pagkatapos po ng homily na ito, ay sasariwain po natin yung ating pangako sa binyag. Lahat po tayo dito, pati po kayong mga nasa labas at umaattend ng misa na nasa labas ng katedral, and even those who are watching us online, we will renew our baptismal promises. Tatanungin ko po kayo pagkatapos ng homily na ito, do you renounce Satan? Ano ang isasagot ninyo? I do. Sana po mamaya, huwag kayong magturuan. No? Huwag kayong magtawanan mamaya. No? Sana ay seryosohin natin ang ating sagot. Nang sa gayon, ang buhay natin ay mapuno hindi ng sumpa ng kasamaan, kundi ng pagpapala ng kabutihan. As we renew our promises to God to renounce Satan, And to say yes to God and goodness, let us allow the waters of baptism, the grace of baptism, to cleanse our lives of evil so that we could always live in the goodness of God. Amen. Please stand.
Dear friends, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may rise with Him to a new life. Let us now renew the promises we made in baptism when we renounced Satan and all the works of evil and promised to serve God faithfully in the Holy Catholic Church. Now we will renew these promises and I hope that our answers will be clear. Speak louder so that I could hear your response and let this response of ours really come from our hearts and ask God to help us to renew these promises of baptism. First, we will renounce Satan and sin. Our response will be, I do. Dear brothers and sisters, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom as the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Buti na lang po malakas na ang sagot ninyo. Salamat po. And now, after renouncing Satan and evil, we will now turn to God and profess our faith and belief in Him. Our response is, I do. Dear brothers and sisters, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace, in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. The faith we have received as a gift, may we share and give as a gift. To your mission, Lord, we give our yes, now and forever. Amen. We shall now have the prayers of the faithful. Our Savior calls us to repent and believe the good news. Let us pray that we will keep the covenant of our baptism in this season of grace. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Church may continue to preach faith and repentance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of nations may embrace God's covenant of peace and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That people who are attached to material things will learn that no one lives on bread alone. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we will renew our baptism through a humble confession of our sins. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ will bring our dead to eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, let us now pray for our personal intentions, for the intentions offered in this Mass, and for people who asked for our prayers.
we come before you, Father, confident that you hear us through the new and eternal covenant of your beloved Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining forty long days from earthly food, He consecrated through His fast the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings, and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. 
Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, the sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Broderick, our Administrator. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is Yours forever and ever. Amen.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
please stand. Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for uh, a few announcements. <clears throat> as I have uh, mentioned uh, during my homily, as we are beginning the Lenten season with the first Sunday of Lent, uh, we are also beginning here in the Archdiocese of Manila, the Len our Lenten baptismal catechesis claimed for Christ. And uh, this is an opportunity for us, these five Sundays of Lent, to renew our baptism, to renew our covenant, our promise to God when we were baptized. Sa mga darating po na linggo, itong limang linggo ng kwaresma bago ang Holy Week, ang mga mahal na araw, ay palalalimin po natin ang pagkaunawa natin sa binyag. Ano ba ang ibig sabihin nito? Ano ba ang ating tungkulin bilang mga katoliko na bininyagan, bilang mga kristyano? Kaya po mapapansin po ninyo, every Sunday ay mayroon po tayong tema. Kanina po, ang inalala natin na bahagi ng binyag ay yung promises, no? Renunciation of sin and profession of faith. Yan yung inalala natin ngayong araw sa binyag. Next week, next Sunday, ang atin naman pong pag-aaralan at pagtutuunan ng pansin ay ang white baptismal garment. Yung puting damit ng binyag. Yan naman ang focus natin next Sunday. So, all of us, next Sunday are encouraged to wear white. No, sana po, uh, next Sunday, kapag nagkita-kita po tayo sa pagsisimba natin, lahat po tayo ay dapat nakasuot ng puti. Ito po ay pag-alala natin sa puting damit na isinuot sa atin nung binyag. And next Sunday, ito po ang ating tema, ang topic na pag-uusapan natin nang sa gayon ay lalo nating mapalalim ang biyaya ng binyag. So next Sunday, those who are coming here, and even those who are watching online, no, I encourage you to wear white so that we could deepen our understanding of the white garment of baptism, our promise in baptism to God. And I am also very happy to see many people wearing your mission crosses. No, natutuwa po ako kapag nagkukumunyon, nakikita ko nakasuot ng mission cross. This is our identity as Catholics. Identity natin ng mga nabinyagan. And this is our symbol of saying no to Satan and saying yes to God. I hope that uh, we could share these mission crosses so that we, um, as many as people as we can, we can reach them so that we could uh, uh, really spread the mission of Jesus Christ. Let us now all stand and uh, receive the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people that hope may grow even in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Five one.
hundred years of faith, grateful today. We bear the gift of mission, totally yours we give ourselves, faithfully yours until we end to your mission, Lord. We give our The sun rises above the hills. Share the word and serve those who are in need. Let the morning star accompany your way. Spread a fire of mission for the Lord. Lord, we give our hearts. 